It's been eight weeks, people. Eight grueling weeks. Yes, I lost some brain cells. Had to do a lot of therapy. Threw up a lot watching it. Many times I consider just dropping the damn thing, but no, I soldiered on. And yep, we finally arrived at the end. And I can take this moment to say the window lickers really outdid themselves with this nonsense. <laughs> It's the moment you've all been waiting for. We finally arrived at the end of season one of The Acolyte. Oh God, was it a painful to get through. Yep. And it picks up where it left off in episode six. Because episode seven was the flashback. So it picks up in episode six. It picked up from where episode six left off. Where... Osha has put on, um, you, you, you know, Smile Ren's helmet and starts breathing hard and starts to tap into some kind of force power that she didn't have because the helmet, people, is very important. This is not just any ordinary helmet. This is a helmet of power. That's the kind of helmet it is. So she starts to... Thing there he comes to stop her and then she starts to affect his his mind using a power he's taking his eyes turn black kind of like what her mother used to do because yeah throughout this show we've seen her struggle to use the force she could barely move her robot but actually she well barely she couldn't even move her robot little pip thing before the start of it but now because of the helmet she has access in Incredible power. Remember that, people. The helmet is important. Yep. So when she when finally do get the helmet off, she um tells him that she saw a vision of the future where me is um standing over um Master Shang Chi's body holding a lightsaber and he's dead. Apparently, she killed him without using the lightsaber. What a convenient power to suddenly be able to see the future. Would have come in handy a lot sooner. But, you know, the Windwell Lickers who did this have to try and throw it in at the end now. Back on the back on the, um, on the ship, May and Master Shang-Chi are talking and he hasn't realized that even though he has a strap down, he hasn't taken the, um, the droid thing from her and She's using that to, to um, free herself while he sits there trying to explain things to her that no one cares about because we all saw what happened and you literally did nothing wrong. Jedi didn't do anything wrong, but they're trying to paint that as something. And she's all, um, uh, you killed my mother. Why didn't you tell, why didn't you tell Osha about it? Why would he need to tell Osha? I mean... The fact that he matters, let us get back to the part about him killing you, but your mother turned into a freaking force specter of Christmas future and started, and whatever she was doing started to affect you as well. For all he knows, she was about to kill everybody. So he used his lightsaber and ran the bitch through. That's what happens. I mean, it's not like you're doing some kind of joke. You, you were there. You saw what happened. But you conveniently want to act like, oh no, this didn't occur, and you just lying about stuff. And he tries to convince her. She uses the um the, the, the droid thing to pick the lock, and then, and then of and then you know surprisingly, or should I say, very immediately, it also has a taser function to it as well. How did that happen? No one knows what a convenient droid this is. She then takes off and for some reason Basil is still on the freaking ship that uh, and I don't even know why this thing is around anymore. She goes there and then um, jumps into an escape pod, takes off flying. Oh yeah, Clyde, he goes after her. We have this really boring chase through this um, asteroid field where she says he won't be able to follow her but somehow he follows anyway. And while he's um, locked on to her, you know, tr uh, he locks on, I'm guessing he's going to shoot or something. Basil... 
when once he's locked on to her and like he's going to fire or something on her for some reason basil then destroys the wiring and and think conveniently to stop him from from shooting which you know causes some kind of thing that i don't know why basil and then he runs off clearly basil has shown that he's a traitor <laughs> he's I don't know, working with her, maybe he was the one behind all of this all along. It's entirely possible. No one ever suspected Basil, so he might be the one behind all of this. So yeah, all of that goes on. And they're gone, they're the planet, the planet that they went back to is Brenda. They're yeah, going back to where all of this began because apparently nobody wants to, nobody wants to leave that crap behind. And surprisingly after all that flying through all this actually i'm gonna think ship ends up going down on on the very planet that they came to brendock and we're supposed to care but under uh, that maze that may ship is about to crash but keep in mind osha crashed the first episode and walked away fine so yeah we're not really very heavily interested in that Back on Coruscant, Leslie Headland's wife, who looks like a who looks like a green M M&M and M that is severely allergic to, to um to any kind of um allergic to the green paint that she is wearing, comes in there and oh my God, we meet the worst Jedi Knight in the galaxy has ever seen again. I mean, this guy looks. Like if a Sith pulls his pulls a lightsaber, he's going to scream, clutch his purse, and and just collapse. Honestly, they couldn't they could not find a, a, a more effeminate looking Jedi Knight if they tried. That's how bad this guy looks. So yeah, she goes in there to meet this um senator, and yeah, senator's a black guy, and he's a netherlinger that you know he doesn't he doesn't trust the Jedi. He believes that the Jedi are a cult and they have been um, using unchecked power for years. And if, if, if they decided to go decided to go bad, who could stop them? They would be unstoppable. I mean, it's not like, you know, the, the Jedi have been guardians of the Republic for hundreds of years or anything. But sure, whatever. All right, so we get back to Osha and Smilo Ren. And, you know, she is now clearly in charge leading him. Because she's going after me and uh, Master Shang-Chi. And he's following because she won't tell him where they're going. Because, you know, she is in charge. You know, she's a strong, confident woman. And he's there about how, um, you know, um, I will give you one more chance to become my, to become my apprentice. You have power. I can train you. And she's like, listen, I am out. I have melanin in my skin and a vagina. I don't need you. I am the alpha bitch here. You better recognize that shit. Mm -hmm. Don't you play with me. And he's like, oh my God, you are so correct. Here are my balls. Take them. I don't need them anymore. You're in charge now. You're absolutely fantastic. And I've wasted my life being a cuckold you you really need to just go and then because it wasn't bad enough what do we see when they're flying away oh look it's dark plague is Darth plagueis where did Darth plagueis come from i don't know has he been living in the cave all this time i don't know was he the one who um who gave Osha that 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 um, that that form fitting outfit? Maybe he's also Darth seamstress. I don't know. We never find out. But no, Darth Plagueis just emerges somewhere because you know plot point reasons that that they never explain. We get back to um Brendock and Master Shang Chi activates his homing beacon so the jedi can know where he is i mean even though he ran from the jedi before i don't know and what he told me on the ship is that the reason he wants to take um may and osha back to the um to the, to the jedi to the council is that with the two of them now they can see that a convergence really that happened with the that evergence really did happen on this planet because they didn't have any proof before. What about the blood samples that you took? 
you took blood samples from two people and it is actually showing that May and Osha are actually one person split in two. Eh? So you have the blood samples. You also have records and video of them on the ship. Why didn't you take any of that to the council? But no, because everybody is stupid. This is the kind of crap that we keep getting. Sure, why not? Absolutely, see, boy. Yeah. So he goes looking for me leaving Basil on the ship because, again, Basil might be the one behind all of this. But no, let's just leave the furry freak behind. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Look at that, look at that him going there and Basil probably thinking, you dumb Jedi son of a bitch, I'm the one behind all of it. I know that's we get. So Leslie Headland's wife who cannot act to save her life because every scene this woman is in, she just sucks the life out of it. She um she finds out from um, you know, the worst Jedi knight possible that uh, Master Shang Chi has turned back on his homing beacon, so she tells him to gather as many knights as possible that won't um that, that won't arouse suspicion. We're going after him. Yeah, I knew what I'm doing. So yeah, Osha and and Smile Ren show up on the planet because they're going. Master Shang Chi is looking for is looking for um for me. He finds his way into the um in the temple and the, the, the temple that the, that the lesbian space witches have because it's pretty easy to see how did they miss it 16 years ago I don't know goes in there looking for her so Osha and Smile Loren show up at the um at, at the base where, 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 where the uh, lesbian space witches were and they need to get inside and she says the only way to get inside is with the um door controls but no, he has other plans and just vanishes because apparently he can teleport to some shit like that. I don't really know. Uh, Master Shang-Chi is walking around inside of there shouting for, um, for me. I don't know why he thinks she's going to answer, but that's what's happening. She's also roaming around in there because reasons. And then we have Osha attempting to open the um the the, the repair the, the um the, the controls to the door even though they were destroyed from the inside and the power generator literally blew up 16 years ago so there is no way in hell this is going to work literally no way in hell oh wait i stand corrected it does work she just um, you know touches some wires together and it works that's how things work, but then again, this was a stone structure that burnt, so anything is possible at this point. Really anything, he's still looking around. And then, Smile Oren shows up, right by Master Shang-Chi. Lightsabers ignite, and they're ready to go at it. And they begin, yeah, slash, slash, stab, dance, slash, whoa. We're slashing away, and then, ladies and gentlemen, we get the coded regress. We get the actual moment, and this thing turns into something else. Yeah, they're battling there, going back and forth, and all of this. And right there, people, what do we enter? Right there is where we enter Crouching Tiger, Hidden Jedi. That's when it turns into something. No, no more of that joking shit. No, they're coming for you. Raw now, yep. And they're there, and their lightsaber battle is not bad considering the quality of what we've gotten in this show. It is not bad. Understand me, it's not bad whatsoever. Um, there's some some nice moves here and there and all of that. And then Osha and Osha ends up in there, she and me meets up and me is telling her that um, you know, um, Master Shang, she lied to you. It was that uh, Master Shang, she lied to you. He killed our mother and all of this. And she's all that, um, you know, the reason why I couldn't become a Jedi wasn't because of anything like that. It's because of you. I couldn't get over my anger towards what you did. And that's why I couldn't be a Jedi. And then because we needed to drag this out a little more 
we literally get the worst girl fight you have ever seen. I mean, it's one thing to watch Amanda Stenberg flop around, but this woman has the same facial expression no matter what. Literally, no matter what. Her facial expression never changes. Really never changes. And the fight choreo choreography is really terrible. Telling you, look at this stuff now. It's so badly done. You can't even pretend this isn't this isn't crappy. And how do and how do these two women who haven't seen each other for 16 years have the exact same fighting style? Well, no one cares, but still pretty bad to look at. We get back to um to Smilo Ren and Master Shang Chi fighting, and while they're fighting, the Jedi. Um, and the Jedi come over, overhead, they continue their, their, their battle, and then to, to, to you know, if, um, Master Shang-Chi ends up slicing Smilo Ren's lightsaber, and then he has him at his mercy, right there. And then he decides, I'm going to linger here for about 12 to 18 seconds to give me time to arrive. And me arrive starts then she picks up his lightsaber, right? She gets his lightsaber, and then she she gets the lightsaber, and um, Mas and Smilo Ren is all about um, strike him down, do it now, and you will and you will have completed your training. This is the same guy who wanted to kill her just a little while ago, but she tosses the lightsaber aside and damages the Nikaiba crystal because yeah, they're all that flimsy that once you toss them there, they automatically break. That's what happens. But May is all about no. I want him to go before the council and confess what he did. Okay, sure, let him go before the council. We went to this planet, found evidence of a virgins, found and found that evil cult of space which is were using the dark side of the force they use the virgins to create you and your sister we believe that you and your sister were in terrible danger the witches were hostile towards us and attacked us without warning we defended ourselves then you burnt the place to the ground while the rest of the space witches mind jacked the wookie and when master trinity broke the connection they all decided to die of boredom that's what happened. Why would anybody need to hide that? I don't know, but that's what happened. That is literally what happened. But she wants to act like it's something else and the Jedi did horrible things. And Master Shang-Chi is trying to tell her, listen, this is this. And what happened was what thing and all of that. And then he actually confesses that, that yes, he did kill. He did kill their mother, right? And when he does that now... Osha hears him from like 15 feet away. I mean, they aren't shouting, but somehow she hears it. And he goes there and tries to tell her that, uh, you know, uh, what happened and all of this. And he tried to protect her. Uh, I think uh, she, has the, she, has his, she has his lightsaber. And while he, when he goes up to her there and trying to explain what's going on, he suddenly starts to get force choked. <laughs> Literally starts to get force choked. She is force choking the life out of him, drops to the ground, and she's doing it. And Smilo Ren is there like, yeah, that's how you do it. She's choking the life out of him. And you know what he does? When she's choking the life out of this idiot for, for reasons, he actually... And then, you know, the Kaiba crystal starts to turn red because he's getting corrupted. Yeah, while he's getting, while he's getting the life choked out of her there, while he's getting the life choked out of him by her, he actually says to her, it's okay. You spent your, the entire reason you wanted to do all of this is because you didn't want Osha to, to, to go down the dark side. You wanted to have her as your father, one with a razor to be good at all this stuff because she wanted that. No, she's literally gone to the dark side now and is choking the life out of you. And you said, uh, it's okay. This would, this is the equivalent of what would have happened if, 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 if in the battle between Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi, Obi-Wan had said to Anakin, Anakin, I have the high ground now, but it's okay. 
joining the Sith is fine, hunting down and murdering the Jedi are okay. You decided to go to the dark side. We could have been a little better. Go out and enjoy killing people. I completely understand. Boy, would that have, that have killed the franchise quickly. But no, that's what he says to her. He says to her, it's okay. And then she just kills him. <laughs> that's it. She just kills him. Right then and there. And, and that's what happens. And then once that done now, you know, um, Smile Oren tries to go over to her. She pulls out, um, um, you know, Master Shang. She's lightsaber. It flickers blue for a while and then it turns red because now it has been corrupted. Yeah, that's how it works. And she has become, she has turned to the dark side. Yeah, that's what's going on. So the Jedi arrive because they actually were, they were actually there all this time while all this was going on, but only now come out the ship because apparently, you know, they, they had to, they read the script and decided to wait until all of that was over. So they come out there, right? And then, you know, um, Leslie Headland's wife comes out. And when she steps foot there, she gets her, she, she gets her feeling through the force. And when she, what she, rea what she does is she, con she realizes who Smile O'Ren is. And it turns out he's her former student. Yeah, so now we know how he got those whip marks on his back from her, um, from, from her, from, from her lightsaber whip. Yes, because child abuse is perfectly fine now. That's what we're getting at now. Yeah, she realizes it's him and they need to go after them to, to find out what's going on. So Basil is still there because he's most likely behind all of it. Worst Jedi Knight alive is talking with him. So they decide, no, the ones where they decide they need to escape after leaving, you know, uh, Master Shang Chi's dead corpse there because, you know, he was perfectly okay with her killing him. Idiot. A Jedi go inside the temple. Me and uh, me and Osha take off because now they're because now they're besties. They're besties and they need to go. Yeah, so, so the Jedi come in led by led by Leslie Headland's wife who still cannot act and has a facial expression that could like literally melt concrete. They come in, they find Master Shang Chi's dead body. She tells them to, to spread out and everything and go and see what has to do and chase after whoever. Smilo Ren is there watching while um, Leslie Headland's wife goes over to um, Master Shang Chi and then while she is there with him, you understand me, she um while she's dead, uh, with his corpse and all of this, she senses someone's watching her and looks up to where Smile Ren would have been, even though his helmet is supposed to block out the force and all of this, because none of this makes any freaking sense anymore. Absolutely none. The terrible twins take off running. Basil decides to, Basil using the Jedi go to hunt them down. They go to the tree there and they're all trying to give her whatever's going on and all of this. And she's, I'm sorry, I didn't believe you. And then Smilo Ren shows up and tells them that if he can find them, the Jedi can find them. So here's Osha's brilliant plan. Let my sister escape. And I will become your pupil. You know, this better plan here, but um, how about all three of you escape and then go your separate ways? That would work. I think that would work really well. But no, this heel turn crap needs to happen. So Smilo Ren says, you know, he can try to wipe May's mind so she doesn't have any memory. Of it because May says, you know, the, um, you know that the... Um, that the Jedi will 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 use her to find Osha and Smile Oren. So he says, you know, yes, he could try and he could try and wipe her mind because suddenly he knows how he knows how to do that. Have a big emotional moment. And then he wipes her mind. Probably not much to wipe there, but whatever. And they leave. The Jedi show up. And there the Jedi show up led by the worst Jedi knight if possible. And he's all um don't move for anywhere, but you're under arrest and, and may is all, um, what did I do? Because that's supposed to be something. Not sure what. We get back to Coruscant now and they're taking me in. They bring me in to see Leslie Headland's wife. And she asks her questions and realizes that she has no memory past when she was eight years old. 
because that's supposed to make some kind of sense. I'm not sure what. I, I really don't know what the hell is going on anymore, but this nonsense is dragging on. And then Leslie Headland's wife goes before the Senate. Well, I guess they could call this the Senate. I even know what the hell it is. A collection of people, a room. And, and, and listen to what this woman does. Eh? Listen to what this woman does. She blames all of it on Master Shang-Chi. All of it. She tells them that 16 years ago, a group of Jedi went to this, went to Brenda, found, uh, um, found some, um, some space witches there. Um, they ended up killing them and they covered it up. And Master Shang-Chi, aka Saul, um, in, his, in his desire to keep the truth hidden, killed the other Jedi and then took his own life on Brenda. How that makes any sense, I don't know. You could have simply said that, you know, um, there was somebody who was going after them. He, um, he, he, he stopped them. And in the process, he was killed. But no, now you've completely tarnished his reputation for reasons. You're trying to make it like a Jedi anymore. But doing that is basically trying to make, trying to make the make Jedi look bad. And it doesn't look at it. This whole thing makes no freaking sense without how you look at it. None. And yeah, she just throws his ass on the bus the rest of the senator. Um, well, you know, okay, stuff happens and we guess that thing. And Leslie Edlin's wife tells me that she needs to, that she wants her help to track down her sister and a former student of hers who fell to the dark side. And she's like, okay, I guess so. That's not really a problem. I'm not sure what's going on. And we get back. To the island that um that 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 Osha and Smilo Ren are on, and then you know they're staring out at the thing. He comes over there to her, and they stand silently looking out at the ocean. And then he um you know um holds her hand in a way that is probably not you know um master and student like, but I guess that's what we're, that's what we're supposed to be interested in. When it comes to this nonsense, don't ask me why. And that was pretty much the end of that. But just to make sure they have to find some cameo, Leslie Headland's wife comes into her room and is all a master. We need to talk. Because they are doing to talk. And then, you know, slowly the camera pans down to reveal the back of Yoda's head. And that's it. Clearly, they set up for this have some kind of season two. Eh? And I would say, there yeah, people, while it's a highly unlikely we'll have a season two, it's possible they might because somebody did greenlit a season one of this. This has been an absolute train wreck from start to finish. Absolutely ridiculous. None of the things make sense. None of the decisions, none of the people make sense. Nothing. And I can finally say this, after eight weeks, I can give my rating for the Acolyte. I give the Acolyte half a mark out of five. God, was it terrible. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. If you have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it. If you like, if you didn't hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell, you'll be notified every time I put out a new video. And I shall see you all next time. Take care.